We're going to do a little bit more work with vectors now, um, in particular displacement vectors, which um, just tell us how far and in what direction some object is from uh, from where it started. Um, so you might uh, you might name a vector something like uh, 25 meters at uh, 15 degrees south of west. Um, that's a location relative to some starting point or to some, some other point. Um, so let's say we have an object that undergoes two different displacements. Maybe it uh, uh, first goes about 35 meters straight north, and then a second one that's uh, another 25 meters, and we'll say this is at a direction of 30 degrees, uh, about south of west. And so we want to know um, in this problem where this object is compared to its starting point, so just the, the straight line distance on this, um, straight line distance and direction. So on these problems, I think it's generally helpful to, uh, to sketch these out, um, you know, just to, to visualize it, so you know what, uh, what makes sense for an answer. So if we start right here, and then we travel 35 meters to the north, and 35 meters, there we go, and then 25 meters, the direction is 30 degrees south of west. So it might be useful to put in that little compass rose here. Okay, so 30 degrees south of west. That means we start at west and we rotate to the south 30 degrees. That's something like this. So come down like this. And this is 30 degrees. And that's 25 meters. So we want to figure out overall um, how far away and in what direction are we from the starting point. So we want to know the distance from the starting to the ending point and we want to know the direction for that. So that angle, or we can measure that angle relative to, uh, uh, to west. Theta 1 or theta 2 Either one would uh, would be useful for us. So, analytical method on uh, on something like this um, would be to um, take each of our given vectors and find the x and y components for those two vectors. We'll add the x's together. We'll add the y's together, and um, then the total x is going to be the x component for this vector, and the total y is going to be the y component for this vector. So we can kind of sketch in our, our uh, a new triangle on this. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and solve that. So we've got everything down here. Let's just clear a little space. Okay. Switch to green here. So um, for x's, x1 and x2, um, in, uh, let's see, for this 35 meter, that's not going to the left or right at all. So I'm just going to put down that that's, um, you know, an x direction of, of zero there, not going left or right at all. But this one is definitely going to the left, and it goes to the left, you know, this much, all the way over until, you know, this arrow is lined up with this one in the vertical direction. And then it goes down this much. So we'll call this x2 and this is going to be y2. So x2 I would get by using cosine of the angle is equal to x2 over 25 meters. So we just do a little trig here. So x2 then is going to be 25 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees. Or uh, let's see 25 times the cosine of 30 degrees, and that gives us 21.7 meters. Okay, and then y1, ooh, and I should note here that that's a, an x direction um, uh, 
to the left. So typically we say anything pointing to the left is negative and to the right is positive. Anything up is positive and anything down is negative in the y direction. And just to be consistent so we don't forget our, our system, we'll, we'll go ahead and follow that, that uh, guideline here. Um, for our first vector, the y1 is just going to be the whole vector. It's all in the y direction. So this is 35 meters. And y2, that's going to be this distance right here, which is opposite from the angle. So I'm going to do the hypotenuse, 25 meters. There we go. Uh, times the sine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is just one half, so this will be 12.5. But again, I see that it's pointing downward. This vector points down and to the left. So for the x part, we do to the left. For the y part, we do down. So that's got to be a negative. Now really, the signs on these, uh, you, I mean, you can use whatever system you want. Um, we just need to be sure that if I've got one vector that's going up, like this 35, and one that's going down, like this uh, y component of the 25, that those have opposite signs from each other. But it's probably easiest just to stick with the conventions you're used to from graphing. Okay, so overall, in the x direction, sometimes we write this as rx, the x part of the resultant vector. We have 0 plus negative 21.7 meters, so just negative 21.7. And then ry, we have 35 plus a negative 12.5, so that's going to be a positive 22.5 meters. So now I'm going to take those two values, and uh, that's going to be, let's get a new color here, uh, orange out of work. Um, in the x direction, we travel a distance of 21.7 meters to the left, and in the y direction, it goes overall up 22.5 meters. Okay, so it's up 35 and then down 12.5, so up 22.5. All right, so we want to know the hypotenuse of this triangle. We know the two legs of that triangle, so we can find the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. R squared, we call this R. R squared is equal to negative 21.7 meters squared plus... 22.5 meters squared. So r squared is equal to 7 squared plus 22.5 squared. Oops. Uh, 977 square meters. So r then is equal to 31.3. Meters, okay. and then for the angle, uh, you know, we could measure this angle here and compare that direction to west, or we could measure this angle here and compare that direction to north. Either way is just the same. So since I've got my, my little right triangle set up right here, might as well solve for this angle theta. Um, so my angle is going to be equal to. Well, if you're finding an, an angle, we always do an inverse trig function. So since I started out knowing the uh, opposite and adjacent sides, might as well use the inverse tangent of 22.5 meters over 21.7 meters. This would be a good time to check and make sure your calculator is in, uh, uh, in the mode that you think it's in. You might want degrees, you might want radians, depending on what the question is asking for. But double check and make sure it's in the right mode. It's always a good idea to make a prediction on this. I see this is about 1, so inverse tangent of 1 would be 45 degrees, or that would be uh, pi over 4 for my angle. So um, you know, I, I will, can use that to make sure I'm in the right mode too. I usually work in degree mode unless it tells me to do otherwise. So that angle is 46 degrees. And so now I can write that the resultant displacement, sometimes you do an R, uh, we can just do 
a D here for displacement. And the resultant displacement, um, uh, resultant displacement dr like that, uh, is going to be 31.3 meters at an angle of 46 degrees. And remember, we were finding this one here, so we started at west and we measured to this red line, which was toward north from that point. So that'd be north of west.